Hey folks, welcome to another one of our Pack T tests. Today we're testing 9mm plus P Civil Defense by Liberty Ammunition. This is a 50 grain bullet that's supposed to exit the muzzle at slightly over 2,000 feet per second. As stated, 2,040 feet per second. Now the Pack T test goes like this. What we're going to do is fire five rounds off the bench at that bullseye target from a distance of 15 yards. I'll measure precision, that's the P, of that five shot group. I'll measure accuracy, that's the A, and that is going to be done by scoring uh, those shots on the bullseye target. And we'll be assessing the consistency of this ammunition by our chronograph and looking at the standard deviation of these five rounds. Then the T part of pack T, we're going to be switching over here and firing one round into 20% clear ballistic ballistic gelatin. This is a 20% NATO block and uh, firing that from a distance of seven yards. I'll be using my HK VP9 pistol today with a Trigicon RMR topped on top of it there. Let's see how this goes. I think with these fast little bullets, I need to set the velocity range to rifle. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Having trouble. I don't trust any of this. Um, tremendous amount of trouble. I fired seven rounds now over this. Um, it's just not recording. I don't know what's going on with this particular bullet. But um, I don't think we'll be able to get a good consistency test here. But at least we have precision and accuracy on that bullseye target. And we'll definitely get the terminal performance out of the gel block. Now this is interesting. This 50 grain bullet entered pretty much center. I wanted to go a little bit higher above center, but it doesn't matter that much. Um, did nice. You can see that fragmentation, lots of fragments expanding out very quickly it looks like. Lots of energy dumped really fast in this gel block. And uh, this path, by the way, is from a G9 defense round that we also tested. You can catch the video for that one with the link in the description below. But let's take a quick measure. It looks like, oh, about eight inches. We'll get the official measurement back in the shop. Let's dig into the results from all this data that we just collected. And we'll step through this just like we did out at the range. Start with the pack part of our test and then progress into the T terminal part of the test. Precision, not the greatest. A bit of stringing here, extreme spread, 2.01 inch. Again, this is at 15 yards. The accuracy part, we scored 42 points with zero in the X. But what I'm also doing, and what I'll also note, is that my VP9 is not zeroed for this ammo. So if we adjusted the zero and did an adjusted um, accuracy test, you'll see that this one didn't really do that bad. 
Um, it ended up scoring, it would have ended up scoring 49 points still with zero in the X. Now consistency, we had our problems or I had my problems with that part of the test. I could not get a reliable velocity during the test itself. I think I got one velocity at 900 feet per second, 11, another one at 1100 feet per second. I tried the, the rifle setting, didn't like that either, but I didn't, I didn't give up. I went out to the range two more times, ended up finishing the entire box, and I did uh, get one reliable reading. It's unfortunate. Just one reliable reading under um, rifle mode. That makes sense. Uh, anything above 1,700 feet per second, lab radar says, should be shot at uh, rifle mode. Um, and it was 2,001 feet per second. Nice strong signal. So I believe that was a good, correct uh, measurement of muzzle velocity. Unfortunately, when you have a sample of one, you cannot calculate mean, median, standard deviation. It's impossible. You can't do it. So I do not know anything about the standard deviation of these velocities. Now for those of you who maybe have a lab radar or just interested in that, I went all the way back to the manual. I always carry the manual with me. Went back to the manual uh, and I remembered, you know, the, the rifle setting. So I tried that and, you know, some things weren't working, but I was also extremely careful um, when, especially when I went back out, where I was placing the muzzle in relation to the lab radar itself. And for handguns, they are recommending that it be flush. So the, the lab radar is here. Let's say the lab radar is here. Well, the muzzle should be here also. And uh, with a little bit of help from my son, he was looking carefully from the side and telling me, go a little bit forward, a little bit back, and I got it just right. Did end up getting one reading as I already alluded to. It is what it is, and it's kind of a done deal at this point. Let's go on and talk about recoil. So here we're looking at recoil, and what I'm using for my recoil testing is the Mantis X10 recoil meter. On the right side, you see my average for what I'm calling my standard ammo. This is CCI Blazer Brass 115 grain full metal jacket. This ammo gave me a 0.98 average recovery time. I'll note I actually got one of my recovery times down to a quarter of a second and also an average muzzle rise of 17.53 degrees. Both of those are more mild than the standard ammo. Very pleasant to shoot. I don't remember anything terribly difficult with it. Uh, didn't feel like it recoiled a lot, and you really wouldn't expect it. It's just a 50 grain bullet. Yes, it's going pretty quickly. A little bit of snap there to it, um, but nothing, nothing outrageous. I would say it's a very shootable bullet. Now let's talk about terminal ballistic results. If you watched our previous video that we put out this year, that was the 80 grain G9 defense bullet, uh, you'll recall that that bullet had pretty good penetration but absolutely no expansion and um, kind of an anemic looking um, cavitation channel inside the gel block. Now I'm not complaining about some of these things simply because that bullet actually did perform as it's advertised. It was advertised to not expand. It's a non-expanding bullet with the idea that there's still going to be, they call it an external hollow point design. It's supposed to have uh, quite a bit of, of, um, of cavitation inside the gel block. We didn't see that. But the focus of this video is the Liberty Ammunition Civil Defense. Now this bullet is marketed or it's advertised to do things a little bit differently. Number one, it says 2,040 feet per second. I wouldn't doubt that that's pretty darn at least close to true. 
uh, two inch dispersion, that's the extreme spread at 25 meters, we got two inches uh, at 15 yards. The, uh, the interesting thing is, in all of my different attempts to get more velocities, I shot, I'm, uh, I shot numerous groups. I mean, I shot the whole box. This is empty now. And um, I, I, I was actually shooting for group. Why not? May as well give it some more testing. And uh, it shot very similar to what we're seeing today. So, you know, maybe two inches is about right. I wouldn't doubt that. Maybe a little bit larger group at 25 meters uh, for my particular handgun. But it says 12-inch penetration at a distance of 10 feet. The, um, the test that I did was done at 7 yards. That is 21 feet. So we didn't get, of course, 12 inches of penetration. We saw 8.375 inches of penetration at 7 yards. That could be true. Um, that would also assume that this bullet is slowing down really, really rapidly. So I don't know if that's really 100% true. It does talk about what they say and, and call the starburst fragmentation. Oh, it did that. We saw that. Very neat um, textbook, if you want to call it that, starburst fragmentation. And as a result of that, in the first couple of inches, of that gel block, we got um, some really nice, about a four inch, about a four inch cavitation, balloon, if you want to call it that, appearing right there. That's the, the largest, uh, what we call transient cavitation channel shot uh, or view that we got when I looked frame by frame by frame at our slow motion photography. Now this bullet is a light bullet to start with, 50 grains, but I did not even, I couldn't retrieve all 50 grains inside that gel block when I cut it up. There may be tiny little fragments in there somewhere uh, that would constitute an equal full 50 grains, but I, I didn't find that. We have a weight retention, including all the pieces, of 84%, almost 85%. The diameter of the retrieved bullet, by golly, it looks, it looks like a coin. It almost looks like a, a um, hearing aid battery. Just tiny little thing made the, that was the largest piece that kind of kept pushing forward along the primary path of that, of that wound channel. And as a result, this bullet scored very poorly, 207.5 points, using the modified FBI protocol and that is out of a possible 500 points. Now, that sounds terrible. The bullet did not do very well, didn't score very well, you might say, so forget that thing. I'm no longer interested in it, but let's, let's go back a little bit, and um, lethality, let's talk about that a little bit. Lethality doesn't come from points. Could score whatever, and the bullet could be highly lethal or, or not, right? Hopefully, the score reflects lethality pretty well. But of course, the, the scoring follows the traditional train of thought of a, essentially a hollow point bullet that mushrooms very nicely and does this, that, and the next thing. But let's understand where does lethality come from um, in the real world. Well, in essence, a bullet is lethal because as it enters that target, the tissue of that target, it crushes and it breaks, it tears apart that tissue. Uh, some of that is done, obviously, with that mushroom that is formed on traditional bullets and that much larger frontal area pushing and tearing and stretching those tissues, but also the spin of that bullet as it's going through that tissue the sharp edges on some of these bullets will just tear things up. Will this bullet crush and tear tissue? Very little. I would say, based on what we saw, um, very little of that is going to be going on. Instead, what we're very likely to see with a bullet like this is a lot of hemorrhaging, 
a lot of internal bleeding, um, and very, very slow incapacitation. It's, it's probably not going to give you that hard stop, unless the bullet is put absolutely where it needs to be for that hard stop, which is pretty much here, right? Somewhere in that T-zone, uh, right there in the head. And then I wonder, uh, would it have the, the energy, that little 50-grain bullet that very, very quickly does the starburst fragmentation, would it have the energy to penetrate the skull or the heavier bone, those sort of things, to cause that instant hard stop? I don't know. I don't know that much about uh, this bullet and uh, the density of the bone. You know, we did some sim bone tests before. It was kind of inconclusive with some other bullets. So I don't know. But I throw that out for you to consider and to think about. Well, that pretty much wraps things up for this test. If you have some ideas, comments, thoughts, please post those in the comments section. And as always, thank you for watching.